It actually started 10 years ago, 2012 in Hong Kong FDI. All right, so Professor Lu Haiping was the first time that I met him. And the following year in Turkey, in Istanbul, he was then elected as the FDI Dental Practice Committee member. So ever since then, we have been meeting each other in Bangkok, in India, in Poshnan, in Madrid, and many, many countries all over the world on a basis. And Professor Lu is also the Vice President of the Chinese Orthodontic Association, and he is also the Dean and a professor of Zhejiang Chinese Medical University. All right, so, and he also has many, many accolades. One of the very important things is he's a vice president of the Chinese Stomatological Association. All right, and also the president of the Chinese Private Practitioner Association. And not to mention, he, is, he has a very successful practice in, the, in Hangzhou, which is a hometown of Alibaba, all right? And I love Hangzhou very much, okay? So, and I visited his practice also. His practice is just like a palace to me, all right? So, and I think that um, tonight his talk, right, is also on a very high power orthodontic uh, topic, which is talking about management of high angle patients, right, as well as a differential diagnosis. So, for those of you who understand orthodontics, right, you know that uh, high anger is one of the toughest orthodontic problems that we can we ever seen. And then, and most of the time, we are talking about management with the orthodontic jaw surgery. But Prof. Lu tonight is talking about how we could have a differential diagnosis and what are the cases that we can manage, what are the cases that we could not manage. So this is actually a very, uh, I shall say, a technological breakthrough in terms of orthodontics innovation. So I'm not sure about you, but I'm very much uh, looking forward to this lecture. So without further ado, I'd like to pass the mic to the main character tonight, which is Professor Lu. Okay, Hai Ping, over to you. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, mm. thank you very much, Hao. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. uh, Dr. Uh, Mohammed, thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Uh, thank you very much for paying attention to my lecture. Okay. I will share. I want to make sure to share the right one. Is that okay for the screen? The full screen? Yes, it's okay. Also, it's okay. Okay, thank you. Yes, we can see you. Yeah, go ahead, please. Bro. Uh, yes, I I would like to express my gratitude to uh, Dr. Hao and Dr. Mohammed for uh, inviting me to have lecture tonight for your invitation. I'm from uh, Hangzhou, just as Dr. Hao mentioned. Uh, that's a very beautiful scenery and uh, uh, I practiced there for more than 25 years. I also teach in Minghui Fu's orthodontic research and education center. Uh, Professor Fu is my respected mentor. Uh, he passed away several years ago, but he is my respected mentor forever. Uh, I teach in uh, his education center. Um, my topic tonight is about differential diagnosis and the treatment of the high angle patient. Clinically, we have many patients with steep mandible with steep mandible, project face 
and retreated mandible have a long anterior facial height, leap in competence. We have many patients like this, but are they the same patients? Definitely not. So we have to diagnose before our action. We should look inside into the skeletal pattern of these patients for the left patients. Her gonia angle and ramus height are almost normal. Although these patients have their high, the long anterior facial height and the big mandible plane, but the gonia angle and the ramus is almost normal. But for the patient in the middle, she had short ramus height. She had a very large gonia angle and long face. For the patient in the right, he had short ramus and notch, a very obvious notch, and also he had almost a normal bony angle, but he had short ramus and retruded chain, and short and retreated the lower anterior uh, the face is retruded. The diagnosis and the treatment strategy for them should be different. We know that the factors of vertical problems are position of corner fossa, the obtuse cranial based angle, and the maxillary and the corner growth, the dental alveolar development, or other abnormalities such as the corner reception, etc. Posterior facial height is associated with the position of, of the, the joint with the ramus height, with the gonad angle, and the anterior facial height are associated with the position of the maxilla, the position of the posterior dental alveola. We know that Bjork have a very famous study with, with mini screw. He found that posterior upward and backward growth of conda result backward and downward notation of mandible. This is the primary effect of high angle mercury. So, of course, this is a skeletal uh, pattern of hyperdimension mercury. The indicators of backward rotators are the straight corner head, straight mandible canal, notched mandible lower border, and 
mandibular symphosis slopes forward. So there are four indicators for backward rotators for hyperdivergent uh, skeletal patterns. We know weak muscles, airway problems are frequently observed in high angle cases. These factors may influence the mandible posture and allowing more freedom for molar eruption and dental alveolar development. So the hyper, the skeletal pattern is also influenced by weak muscle, by airway problems. So the differential diagnosis for skeletal pattern or dental alveolar problems. The saddle angle, gonia angle are unchangeable. We cannot change the saddle angle and the gonia angle with our orthodontic treatment. But we can change, sometimes we can change FMA and articular angle by our treatment. Dr. Assassin have a study about the variation in vertical facial growth and the associated variation in skeletal and dental relationship. They found that a long face high angle patient, the distance between up first molar to parietal planes is about 22.5 millimeters in average. But in average angle patients, the distance is about 19.6 millimeters for the patient with short face with low angle patients. The distance is about, for the upper smaller to parietal plane is about 17.1 millimeters. So the variation between high angle and the low angle patient is about 5.4 millimeters. But for the lower first molars to mandibular plane, the variation between high angle and low angle patients is about 2.9. You know, 5.4 for the R and 2.9 for the lower. A very large variation from R, first molar to petal plane. This gives us a hint that there's more we can do in the R, but not more, but, but not as more but not as much as for the lower molars. Uh, first, we want to see uh, the case with a uh, uh, 11 year old girl with kerchief compound is protrusion. She has convex facial profile she has a retromassic mandible. She has a long, elongated lower anterior base. And her lip was incomplete. For her, for her skeletal pain, the golden angle was normal. Her lamus is all normal. Although she had steep mandible plane and protruded the dentition and the retruded chin, her articular angle 
is also larger than normal. She had two to three meter millimeters clotting. She had narrowed up and lower. There's a third modus. The treatment is to retract anteriors and intrude posterior, up posteriority by the middle school. So the profile change a lot after treatment. Basically, the up molars, up molars intruded, the lower molars are well controlled after treatment. So the occlusion after treatment was good, load period, Two years after treatment, mm -hmm. so the outward growth is very good. The chin go forward, and four years after treatment, even more beautiful. So the occlusion is good after four years of treatment. Anterior excursion. And this is the canine protection. The caution is good. So the before treatment, after treatment. One year after, two years after, four years after. So she had more favorable growth after treatment. The more and more harmonious and sweet profile. So this is a high angle case with dental area of normalities. Her, she had growth, pet, uh, growth potential. And the second case was 60 years old female, more mature the patient. Her, Gonia angle was almost normal, but she had large articular angle and large FMA. It was caused by the updental ovulus, overdevelopment of updental ovulus. The class one with slight crowding, wisdom teeth not elongated. So the treatment was also suggested that the mechanism is almost the same as the first patient. We intrude the up dental velar teeth and retract the anterior teeth. As she was at treatment. As a crucial. And arm molars were intruded. Up a crucial plane flattened. So the FMA and the articular angle reduced. So her face changed a lot. This is a patient, more major patient with less growth or almost no growth, but by intruding or up dental arrears and retracting anterior, we can have a good result. Before treatment, during treatment, after treatment, and two years after treatment. Third case, or third case. Third case is a 18 years old with a very long face. Very steep mandibular. 
And for measurement, almost all of measurement are abnormal. And the safe also showed a very severe low posterior rotation growth pattern. There are compensation of up and lower incisors. There are some compensation or incisors, but we still have open mind. That's one dentition with anterior open mind. Treatment plan was to intrude the upper arch with miniscules, intrude the whole upper arch to compensate the abnormal skeletal. At treatment. Although we have the face was still longer, but she is more, much more beautiful and more charming than before. And the closure is good. We see that if it may change it and the A and B reduced, the articular angle reduced, although the gonia angle, we know, is still not changed. We cannot change the gonia angle. But by astotic treatment, we still have great changes for her profile. This is a uh, 20 years old boy. He had steep mandible, but we can see the lamus, the posterior facial height is very short, and the anterior facial height is longer. And she ha he had the truded mandible. We can see from safe, short lemurs, posterior facial height, and we have a big anterior facial height. And they have a very obvious notch here, here, and a very obvious notch. And here is the first model, have a very bad first model. And the CBCT shows some resorption or reconstruction of condyle. We can see reconstruction of condyle. Class two model relationships. Class two and narrowed. Our patch, very narrow our patch. The treatment, treatment was extract, extraction of up first molars and the lower, uh, up first premolars and the lower first molars. With the intrusion of our patch or our posterities by many school. And we have a good change of face. Also, the mandible is still a little bit retruded, but not.
Okay. There is some problem with uh, Wi Fi. Now oh, is it okay? Uh, we okay. cannot see your we cannot see your screen, huh? Oh not screen. Okay, I will try to uh, okay. Can you unshare yes. and reshare? Yes, it's okay. Yeah. 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 I, I share now we... my screen yes. okay. Now it's okay. Perfect. That's good. Yes. Thank you. Okay, for this patient, we change A and B, change the A and B, and change the FMA by intrusion or up plus. But we have the occlusal plane, we keep the occlusal plane. And the third molars, there's a third molars and all uprightness. A caution is good. And the condyle is condyles are still stable. The last case I showed is 24 years old female, which I treated 15 years ago. She also have very long face and short lamers. The safe is almost the same as the third patient. So every measurement are abnormal. Have open bite? And she had resorption of condo. Resorption of condo. How can we start treatment of this patient? I talk with her. Surgery first, surgery, but the patient refused. She did like surgery. That's before compensation treatment at that time. So I intrude the arm molars first and then align the upper and the lower arch. Here we Got the result. Here's a face after treatment. Here's a dentation, a compensation dentation. And this is a change of her dentation and skeletal pattern. We have the intrude, we have intruded her posterior teeth and maintained the lower posterior teeth. I'm very happy to see that this is a condyle after treatment. Maybe the reduce of stress is a TMJ is beneficial for reconstruction of her condyle. Two years after treatment. According two years after treatment. So that's a change of her face. So this patient have a hyperdivergent pattern and she had compensation of dental area, but she had TMJ problem, have resorption of her condyle. To summarize, although 
those patients I presented have very similar facial care characteristics. Each patient have its unique underlying etological factors causing high mandibular angle. Differential diagnosis is crucial in order to achieve optimal treatment outcomes. Based on the available evidence and my clinical experience, I classify the high angle cases into four types of sub-classification. The first is dental alveolar type, characteristic by overdevelopment of dental alveolar bone, uh, dental alveolar, and some patients has arch waist discrepancy, they have airway problems. But they have normal gonia angle. So the shape of mandible is almost uh, normal, but still they have large anterior, large anterior facial act and large FMA. So the treatment strategy for this type of patients are remote pathology. The home lies up and the lower arch weights. And so the airway problems when the patient is, is a growing patient. If the patient and the adult patient, we have the coordinate arch weights and control or intrusion of molars are important. So our molars are more easy to intrude than lower molars. So the second is skeletal type. Skeletal pursue real, this is a real high angle cases. The skeletal, skeletal type of uh, high angle cases, they have the submentable shape is different and the development of the condyle is normal. So this type of patient have large body angle, have straight condyle head, and also they have short limbs and large anterior facial height. So the, the treatment strategies is compensation. And for the Dental aurora subclassification the treatment is just the that's a treatment is treatment. But for skeletal type, the treatment, the mechanism of treatment is compensation. It's compensation and control. But for the very, very severe case, we have surgery. <laughs> for very, very severe case. And the third type is pathological. Pathological type is a resorption of condyle, have short limbs and small posterior facial height, and also have retruded mandible and natural injection. For this type of patient, the best choice is start treatment uh pro we can't hear you already um i think professor lu is uh offline yeah? Probably due to unstable internet connection. Let me try to contact him right now. Ah, uh, Hai Ping, you offline, huh? Please, you can connect with him. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think Professor Lu is offline. So meanwhile, while we reconnect, oh yeah, he's here already. Very good. Yeah. So Professor. 
Uh, Lou, can you hear me? Prof Lou? Okay, I think okay, just yes, now you... Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. I'm here. Can you reconnect again and share your screen again? Because now we, we don't see your screen. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's good. Yes, now we can see you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> there may be some problem with uh, uh, web, with the Wi-Fi. Uh, so I, I want to repeat something for the subclassification sub of high angle cases. Uh, I think just now you talked about up to pathology. The pathology, oh, yeah, so it's the third, third classification. Yeah, you may continue from there, third prof. Oh, okay, thank you, Dr. Ha. So the third is pathological one, which is caused by resorption of conduct. So the treatment strategy is compensate intrusion of amorous one the kind of reconstruction is stable. For safe, for safe, we start to, we start treatment, we start, start any, we, know, we start any dental treatment after the kind of reconstruction is stable. But after, if we wait, the reconstruction may be different. We just intrude intrude and reduce the stress of the TMJ. So this is the, uh, maybe another choice, but more challengeable choice. The fourth is a patient with combined mechanism I just mentioned about. So the patient, the high angle case with skeletal or dental overlap problems and combined with resorption of the conduct just as the last case I showed. So for this kind of patient, so the treatment is compensation at the stable, at the, 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 the limits are stable. So we can tell this type of sub, this type of patients FF very clearly from a face and a safe. So this is dental alveolar type, this is a skeletal type, and this is pathological type, and we should have more. Uh, information as a CCT about uh, his TMJ and the MRI for diagnosis. Uh, so this is a is a uh, topic I want to share with our colleagues of ICD. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Lu. Thank you. Huh? Uh, yeah, very impressive lecture. All right. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, you did finish earlier. So that would give us ample time for our question and answer session. All right. So uh, now I start the borrowing by asking questions right so and also i have seen quite a number of questions uh, already coming in and you're most welcome to okay. kids uh, yeah. asking your question so prof lu my first question to you is that you did mention about the uh cellar angle the articular angle as well as the gonial angle and you also have rightly pointed out that gonial angle you can't change it but articular angle you can change it by reduction. And I believe that by reducing the articular angle, 
you will actually causing the mandible to move forward and thereby yeah. reducing your high angle. Now, the question to you is that, right, how do you make the articular angle change? All right, by posterior. And if so, how much? Uh, okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> This is a very, very good question. Uh, the treatment is in truth the opposite as, as the molars. Uh, in truth, by intrude the molars and control the, the upper molars and control the height of the lower molars. Uh, for uh, the maybe the 10 years ago, we just control by the hypo J hook. But now we have a very good tools, just as many schools, or very schools. But so for some very severe cases, I just combine combined the mini schools and high pull J hook, uh, especially for patient have good potential. Hmm. And by intrusion of the arm models, we have close close the mandible and the mandible will rotate forward. And at the same time, the anterior teeth should also be controlled. By this, mm -hmm. we reduce the FMA. FMA and the articular angle. Articular angle is associated with as a position of mandible. But golden angle, we cannot change golden angle, central angle, the, 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 the shape of, 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 of the power. All right, thank you, Professor Lu. Now, so I, I need to actually throw a challenging question to you. Right, now you mentioned that gonial angle is not changeable, but uh, yeah. let's say if we have a patient and if we were to intrude the lower posterior teeth, all right, by levering the plane, okay, and then would you think that the intrusion will bend the gonial angle such that it will be lesser in a growing patient? Okay, sorry, this is a, a perplexing Very question <laughs> and actually challenge your <laughs> okay, and okay. Okay, yeah, okay. Uh, just stimulate a little bit of adrenaline production. Huh? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, uh, uh, for uh, lower. Mm. It's very changeable for intrusion. Uh, uh -huh. Sometimes we try to intrude to, to keep the height of both molars, but for this kind of patient, we, most of these patients have a, a very curved space, curved space. So for the level mm. of curved space, what we do is to keep the height of the first molar outside. Upright and into the distal curve of the second molar. So this is by uh, by the the usual leveling. We know the lower molars tip forward, and because the shape of the load. So, but if we just put bracket and wire in, we the result we got is an eruption of lower molars without if we do not do do, do nothing for control so the control is we have have a counterclockwise counterclockwise uh, force system force system this is anchorage prepare anchorage prepare or we can prepare anchorage by mini school between Six and seven between first molars and second molars to hold the vertical position of lower molars. So this is a, at, at, at least we have to control. But I okay. do not have more. And we try best to intro, but I don't think it is stable for lower molars. Okay. For Thank you. So we have one Dr. WQ who uh -huh. also want to follow up with your uh, molar intrusion. Now uh -huh. uh, he's asking more specific question is how much do you intrude your molar? 
And how do you measure the amount of intrusion to get sufficient counterclockwise rotation? Right. Do you have a specific way to measure okay. that this amount of intrusion will get this amount of counter rotation and therefore to reduce your class through pattern? Um, do, you, do you have any specific cathrometric parameters or any measurement that can serve as a guide for us? Okay. Uh, we know, well, I just mentioned just a tease. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, what you call posterity still have vertical growth. Yes. This is a, this is a, a, a growth. So the, at least we want to do is just to control the, the growth. We will not uh, produce the elongation. This is a, the, the, the least we have to do with a high angle case. And what we benefit is just hold the course of the models. And clinically, I sometimes I got about uh, two millimeters intrusion of models. So this, we can have a very big change of the change of so the, the rotation. Sometimes one degrees, one degrees of change of the MMA can uh, produce 1.5 to 2 millimeters forward movement of chain. This is a very quick change for us because we yeah. we track the exercises and we get even those one or two millimeters change of chain is very beautiful. Oh, thank you. So uh, currently, if I heard it correctly, one degree of change can actually produce a 1.5 millimeter of counterclockwise rotation. Am I right? Do I yes, hear, we can that? just uh, change the, the geometric uh, uh, <laughs> Okay, all right. So that's a very, very good uh, point of reference. Thank you very much, Professor Lu. Now I have a participant uh, uh, from Indonesia, I suppose, uh, Dr. Andrew Roran, who uh -huh. asked about that, how do you retain the patient, right, for these are high angle cases that you have treated? D are they stable? Are they stable? Uh, yeah, and how do you retain them? <clears throat> we need, we, I think we need more research. For uh, patients I showed about, we have uh, two years, some patients we have four years uh, of follow up. Uh, but this may be need more uh, study about intrusion. For the green patient and for adult, I think they should be. And also the muscle. Uh, uh, have a, uh, uh, have great influence on the stable of the treatment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, sorry. I do you actually indicate the maxillo uh, facial retainer? That means you join upper and lower together to fix them together so that they are not able to open up further? Do you no, have a I just use a holly. I, I, I like a holly. Holly mm. retainer. Just a holly. Yes. Right. A holly retainer retain the holly teeth. Does not retain the jaw. Does not, it does not retain the jaw rotation. Uh, How no do you special retain the jaw rotation? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now I have Dr. Stephen Wong who asks, in what type of high angle cases, intrusions or upper molars is contraindicated? That means you don't agree, you should not do, be doing that. Hmm. What uh, type I of high angle cases? I beg your pardon, Dr. Hao. Oh, okay. 
Now, uh, Dr. Stephen Wong asked, right, what type of high angle cases that intrusion of upper molar is contraindicated? Uh, contraindicated, yeah. Yes, correct. Uh, this is a very, very good question. So I think mm -hmm. if the patient has very steep occlusal pain, and the very, very short lemurs. So the, if the uh, occlusal pain is very stable, we cannot have more compensation. So if this is a surgical cases, so we cannot uh, uh, intrude the models by change, more change of the occlusal pain. Okay. So cases, skeletal cases that you think that we should not uh, intrude the upper molar. Now, the question is that, right, uh, in Bill Profit's Facebook, he did say that uh, contemporary orthodontic technique does enlarge the border for more cases which are supposed to be treated jaw surgery, but right now we are treated it on the non-surgical case. All right. So let's say in your skeletal classification case, which conventionally we think that should be treated with jaw operation, but right now mm -hmm. will you attempt to treat them non-surgically in some of the cases? Oh, uh, yeah. For, <clears throat> for mm -hmm. so the non-surgical treatment, uh, what we do is... Compensation, uh, the first compensation is for teeth. We just mm. upright, it's much more upright of uh, anterior teeth. And the retraction, upright of low incisors and the retraction of upper incisors. So, and the treatment should be in the limitation of dental alveolar of bone, so bone border. Uh, so this is a compensation. We know uh, sometimes the compensation should have some price, some price. We have to pay price for compensation. So we should know the limitation of compensation. This is the first one. So the second one is the compensation of the position of mandible. So this is a counterclockwise rotation of uh, mandible. Just by change the, uh, the, the, the height of the up dimension line. But for the patient to have growth, have growth potential, we, what we do is uh, control the growth of the mandible. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, the maximum. So uh, the high pro is very good. I think the high pro J hook is very, very good tool for control the up maximum. Right, thank you. So, uh, Professor Lu, you have shown a lot of very beautiful cases, right? And most of them are growing patients. And then you have also managed to show that you have reversed their high angle uh, growth direction, all right? And also remain stable, all right? So, well, the question is that, right, would you have done the same thing in adult patient, non-growing patient? Surgery? You mean... No, I mean non-surgery. Non-surgery. In those sort of cases, uh, let's say, for example, they didn't come to see you early, all right, and then they have passed their growth pivotal stage already. Would you make them bluntly just to say that, no, you have passed that already, now you have to go for jaw surgery? Or would you say that let's try to do it non-surgically, but I do not promise you that the result. Would you try that for the same patient, but the age is maybe older? Uh, so that's a very <laughs> complicated question. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah. First, so I can realize your questions more clearly. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, yeah. 
Oh, sorry. You want me to repeat? I see. You want me to repeat my question? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Huh? Okay. So now what I just referring at, in your uh, presentation, you show many beautiful cases. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, of a very well treated result. And all these are uh, very high angle cases. And then mm -hmm. you manage to reverse their growth directions. All right. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. yeah. we notice that most of these patients, they are actually young growing patients. All right. So now our question is that supposing these patients that come and see you presenting with the same problems, but they are already uh, uh, past uh, pubertal age, maybe that they are past 18 years old, would you have done the same treatment? Or would you straight away indicating them to go for jaw surgery? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh. I think uh, this is up to the patient and uh, uh, his own uh, decisions. I will uh, give some choices for the surgery or just try to treat with the non surgery but the prediction or uh, the patient expect expectation, we have to reduce the patient's expect expectation for these very severe or difficult cases. If we, uh, but for aging uh, patients, sometimes they have parallel problem for the patient with parallel problem. So uh, uh, the uh, uh, one colleague has have a question about the culture indication. I think the parallel problem for the posterior disease is they cannot do the patients in this way and have parallel problem. Okay, thank you. Now, I, I think we really have many questions, so you don't mind. Okay, now I have an uh, anonymous attendee who, who asks you these questions that you have a case showing that there is a female patient with mm -hmm. an anterior open bite. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, then he's asking you, what was the treatment mechanics? Okay, is it mainly by counterclockwise rotations of the mandible with posterior intrusion or anterior extrusion with elastics or combination of all. Okay. Basically, this attendee is asking, how do you treat this lady patient? How do you treat it with your mechanics? If you if you don't mind, uh, there's one lady okay, patient. I would like to try to ask these yeah. questions. So for yeah, the anterior, okay. uh, anterior open bite with a high angle. Yeah. Uh -huh. so, so first, uh, mm -hmm. the first I want to do is intrude the Amorous and controls uh, lower models. So this is the uh, first we want to do. And the second is to retract, retract or anterior. If by retract the anterior, so the window the, 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 the clockwise infection. And also by extraction, and the forward moment of austerities. This is a large infection of the, this is a geometric tree uh, shape. But for the last case I showed, that is a patient I, I treated 15 years ago. Uh, I have a lesson for them. I, I, I did not say, it's just as for this patient, there were some recession of the lower incisors, parallel recession for lower incisors. This is a cause by class three relax by the eruption or elongation of lower incisors. So this is a, a compensation treatment. I think the compensation helps price. Compensation okay. means, sometimes means we have to pay in price. For, this kind of patient, maybe the surgery is the first choice, but if we do not do surgery with the lower incisors, 
for, for, for high angle cases, um, many high angle cases have very thin alveolar bone for uh, anterior alveolar bone. So by rejection and the compensation, compensation should be very uh, careful. Sometimes we have to take session uh, x-ray for the, to, 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 keep, to keep watch to, on the available body. And sometimes we have a touch, touch of the lingual side of available body for every visit of patient. Okay, thank you. Now we have a question from a famous orthodontist from Singapore, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Huang Yi Chiao. All right, uh, whom you might have known her also. Now she's asking you an interesting question. Dr. Huang uh -huh. asks, what is your experience with treating these groups of patients with Invisalign? Oh, any clear alignment? Oh, Invisalign. Let's say, <laughs> yeah, let's say it's not Invisalign, any clear alignment. So much, <laughs> I do not have so much experience with Invisalign, but for uh -huh. Invisalign, I think there is a, some acrylic between the posterior teeth. Maybe have some intrusion for by, by biting. I think it's beneficial for control or maybe intrusion of posterior teeth. Maybe. Maybe, okay. Some, All of, right. my, some of my friends showed many case, uh, open by all uh, the high angle case treated by uh, aligners, but the aligners are very changeable. For aligner retraction, lower incisors should be very, very, very careful for this kind of a case. All right. Okay. And then we have Dr. WQ who asked you on the lower molar uh, intrusion. Now, uh, he's asking that. Uh, if you when you intrude the upper molar, you use TED. Do you also need to use TED for the lower as well? If you for the lower arch, or you just put it on the upper arch, that would do. So mm, yes, yeah, so, so the for intrusion of of of, of molar, so the uh, yeah. very important thing is to keep the weight and to keep the torque of posterity. For ARP, we can have, sometimes we have some talk or the shape of arch wire to control uh, the shape of arch. So this is very important. For ARP, we can also have TPA or we can also, maybe sometimes we can have uh, screws, many screws in parallel side. But for lower, it is more, there's a, the, Sometimes we can use legal arch, but I do not use legal arch so, so often. Uh, uh, so the, the first is upright of the lower models, just as a twin door. So this is the first. And the second is uh, sometimes we put the screw in many screws when preparing anchorage. Upright is the second model. We cannot intrude. We should not in extrude the, the first model to have some, some tools to hold the position of first, lower first model at least. Okay. Uh, Dr. WQ actually asks is that, right? Uh, uh, he felt that, uh, he asks is that, right? Uh, if you want to control the lower molar, all right, when you intrude the upper, how do you control the lower molar? Okay. By, by the tap or what? <laughs> Uh, Meaning, how do you control the lower molar when you intrude the upper teeth? Okay, just this is a question I have just have mentioned before. The, at least yeah. in the upright, but uh, 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 I, I, 
I, I think when doctors have some experience in Tucson with tweet techniques. So tweet technique is a very a, pay attention to the tipping of models, just the tip back, tip back. But for tip back, we have to uh, count clockwise, have a count action of force with, uh, with J hook to count the act of the extrusion of models by equity. This is the equity preparation. Uh -huh. uh, also, we can use TED. Use TED. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you use TED, or you can use a tick back, or you use a J hook. Huh? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Progression of equity. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Professor Lu, I'm so sorry to ask you so many uh, difficult questions, but you thank have you answered much. everything. I appreciate it. Yeah, you yeah, answered everything excellently well. All right, and I'm very pleased to meet you tonight also because uh, because of the COVID, we have not been seeing each other for years, right? But you still look as young as ever, huh? all right? Yeah, so yeah, very, very nice to meet up with you tonight. All right, so um, on behalf of ICD, I really want to thank you for uh, offering yourself tonight to uh, speak to all of us. And obviously, our Professor Lu is also a member of ICD. Uh, we're very happy that our fellow are serving our college at the same time, right? So, and so just also for your information tonight, uh, your uh, lecture is actually broadcast live in YouTube also. So it's also available in YouTube, right? And that i like to thank you many, many times again and all our participants from the Asia Pacific. Um, so, and many of them I noted they are, uh, they are orthodontists, all right? And some of them are the postgraduate students from the Hong Kong University, mm -hmm. right? And so, and also our vice president, Professor Asha Malik, all right? He's also here also. So Professor Asha Malik, uh, he raised his hand. I'm sure he has some nice message to tell. Uh, it's an excellent discussion. presentation. <laughs> So yeah. it's uh, excellent. Uh, after a long time, I have seen the Lou presentation many years before uh, I have been listening to him. And uh, especially thanks to my many, many thanks, actually, Mr. President, to my uh, especially chairman scientific committee. Uh, there is no doubt about it that what the effort he's doing, and uh, it is all due to his uh, outstanding calibration, his leadership, and his all uh, parameters which he has been doing for the ICD. It is salute to him that uh, Professor Ibrahim is doing so much for the scientific committee. It is salute by the all of the executive as well as to, from the council that he has been doing excellent. And I think that he will continue and he will be our supporting and he will be our right arm in the ICD. Uh, secondly, uh, uh, Lou, uh, actually, I have no question, but just uh, for information, as a maxillofacial surgeon, uh, we used to have the orthognathic in every uh, second or third list. Uh, um, I would like to say uh, my, uh, my president, uh, Dr. Howe, is also very excellent, and especially I will uh, mention it, uh, John Ling as well, that he's a famous orthodontician in uh, uh, Hong Kong. Uh, uh, I will uh, uh, request one thing, that what is that uh, exact limit when you say that now we have to go for orthognathic surgery. It is now out of limit to all the appliances. What is exact that limit? Where you are stuck and you have to go for orthognathic surgery in a high angle. What is exactly. the uh, very specific point i want to know my students are right here there are two three my postgraduate students also uh, online so i want to ask this question to you that what is that exact point that where we are stuck and now we have to go for the uh, um, uh, correction by uh, surgical way uh, thank you Ashir Marek. so i do not have numbers for the exact Limitation yet maybe 
Uh, uh, so I'll, this uh, we just close. I I, I think we uh, we just for some how to say that we have to uh, thank for these patients. So these patients allow us for take challenges, or we just uh, try to close the limitation, but. Uh, I think treatment is is sometimes we have uh, we have a treatment goal, have a treatment uh, a strategies, but during treatment, sometimes we have to sometimes we have to change uh, with a, by the intrusion, but some. Sometimes some patient with the sinus, with a low sinus, there's, there's a position of sinus are low, we cannot enjoy anymore. This, this is a, some, some point we have. That is the limit. Uh, so, uh, but sometimes we cannot uh, include much more from models. Just because of no reasons, we have to change our strategies. So move forward, move them forward, or retract the, the anterior tissue, or just by compensation, by compensation. So that is it. Or just a referral to surgeons, so. Right, okay. Um, now our registrar, Professor John Ling from uh, Hong Kong, who is also here with us, right? And then I will actually like to, uh, to introduce Professor John Ling, who is also our mutual friend here. Professor John Ling, would you like to Professor greet John Professor? Ling. That's a mutual Hi. Right. Good yeah. Yeah. Well, nice to see you. you call. Right. Hmm? Excellent cases you presented. I'm sure yeah. under your leadership uh, in teaching, your postgrads, uh, they will learn so much things from you. And thank you so much for sharing this uh, with our dentists in Asia. Um, maybe um, just a note, um, do you recommend that we don't use too much class two elastics uh, yeah. when we are protecting the lower molars from over eruption because that would, may cause uh, the lowers to you over in rounds. So uh, my question is, would you recommend not using too much class two elastics in a class two high angle case? Okay. Uh, for any uh, high angle cases, uh, we should be very mm -hmm. careful use inter uh, 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 three elastics. So, yeah. Class two or class three, we should be very careful. Um, if, if we use class two elect with software, with the posterity is not upright, it will cause disasters. It will very easy to cause a eruption or elongation of posterity because the vertical vectors of the force. So, so the, uh, sometimes we want to uh, to correct class two relationship by class two elasticity, but if we do not prepare anchorage, prepare the anchorage, the anchorage very well, the modern relationship will become more class two use class two elastic because also the clockwise rotation of the mandible. So this is for the class two elastics should be very careful. And also for class three elastics. Now I do not use class three elastics for this kind of patient very, very, very carefully. Sometimes we have to manipulate the archway very carefully and use Elastic so very, very carefully because for high angle cases, most of high angle cases have very thin 
Yeah. Mini school helps us a lot. <laughs> yeah. So one one more question on the intrusion of upper molars. Uh -huh. Say we have um very low lying sinus, and while mm -hmm. we are intruding the upper molars, the patient felt some pain. So would you stop or then ask for help? From the oral surgeons. <laughs> okay. And we have to finish the case. Because the sometimes the patient would expect how to take those things. There are no yeah. words to tell the, the, the situation to patients. Uh, okay. Also, also, some doctors showed me that he can notice just through the side that so yeah. he's a very good book because he can. Because, Instruction, but I do not try or just rely on some pieces just intruding to the sinus just as they, they can put the bone in the sinus for impact. <laughs> Maybe, but I I, I think it's a we do not rely on the, the, the intrude molars into the sinus. So you should be very careful because at least the, the cort cortical bone, the, the two line layers of cortical, cortical bone. It's yeah, cool. One more, maybe last thing about the uh, thin bowel type in the class three cases. We have mm -hmm. to retract the thin bowel type in the, in the anterior region. So do uh -huh. we need to warn the patient they might need some uh, Gingral grafting when they finish yeah. because of the unsightly black triangles. Yes, there's some uh, GBR, yes, mm -hmm. G or GTR. Yes. So that Thank is something, something we might have to warn the patient or sign in the consent form they would accept these black triangles. <laughs> yes, we have to mention the border or two. Uh, oh, 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 our borders. Uh, uh, some sailing, we have some sailing mm -hmm. for border. Yes, actually. Thank you so much. I'll pass it back on to our president and uh, right. our mm -hmm. able uh, chairman, Professor Atto Muhammad Abraham. Right. Okay, thank uh -huh. you very much. Professor John Ling. Uh, just before I hand over to our education chairman, Professor Mara Ibrahim, I just want to acknowledge also one of our common friends, Dr. Chiu Hongzhen from Taiwan, is also here for you. All right. Yeah, but unfortunately, uh, yeah, I could not reach him to say something uh, to you. But in any way, I just want to acknowledge him. All right. And then I also want to acknowledge many, many other orthodontic friends. Um, who come and listen to your excellent presentation tonight, including your fans from China. All right. So uh, now I'd just like to hand over to our education chairman, Professor Ma Ibrahim. Over to you, Professor. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Hao Kim Chuan, for moderating the session. And on behalf of Section 15 and the Education Committee, I would like to thank you, Professor Lu Hai Ping, uh, for sharing his, uh, uh, his experience tonight with his patient, and we got a lot of questions tonight. And thank you very much for being able to be here tonight. And hopefully, we can meet again in future for some other programs, Professor Lu Hai Ping. Okay, as usual, uh, I will now. Uh, uh, share our next meeting uh, speakers, right? Uh, our next program will be on the 20th of uh, July. Uh, he's a very known professor from Australia, Professor Winthrop, Professor Mark Tannen from University of South, uh, Western Australia at Perth. Uh, he will talk about a very interesting topic, the Global Grand Challenge 
facing oral health in the next 25 years, addressing global issues through innovation. That is the topic uh, choose by Professor Mark Tanner Hope. You can, all of you can join us again on the 20th of uh, July, same time, 9.30 Malaysian time to listen to our uh, 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 read down professor from University of Western Australia. Thank you and good night and till we meet again in uh, two weeks time. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you and good night. Thank you, Dr. Mahan, Dr. Ha, John Lee, and Dr. Ashad. I hope to see you in Hangzhou to have well, dragon tea. They have tea along the West Lake. Okay, hope to see you. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.